questions for experiment seven. In this experiment, we do two types of reaction, but a single displacement reaction and then double displacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, you start with an element and a compound. And a, your element, if it's a metal, replacing metal from the compound. If it's a non-metal, it would replace the non-metal from its compound. The condition for this is that the element must be more reactive than the ion metal that you have in the, in the compound. So this is known as the metal and the metal that is engaged with, an, with a non-metal or polyatomic ion in the compound is known as the metal ion. So we have metal and metal ion. If the metal is more reactive is, than the metal ion, is going to give electrons to the metal ion, metal ion would be reduced and we get that metal ion as the metal solid now coming out of the solution. When you are dealing with non-metals, if your non-metal is more reactive than the non-metal that is in the compound, it will be replaced and the non-metal from the compound would leave the compound. So because one element replacing another element, this is known as a single replacement method. If you look at these two reactions, if the forward reaction takes place, that means that if lithium is more reactive than silver, lithium would replace the silver from its compound and silver would come out as a solid. But if, silver, if lithium is more reactive than silver, that means that silver is less reactive than lithium. And since silver is less reactive than silver, is not going to replace the silver, the, the lithium from its compound. So we get no reaction. In other words, in order for single displacement reaction to take place, the metal that is reacting must be most, more reactive than the metal ion. Silver is less reactive than the lithium ion, so it's not going to replace it. Well, how would you know if it's more reactive or less reactive? In your lab manual, you would have, you have the figure 7-1. 7-1 is the figure that will, uh, would tell you which ions are uh, based on the activity series. That is known as the activity series. Any element that is higher up, is going to replace the ones below. So based on these observations, what we have here, so we have, let's say we have magnesium, we have copper, we have silver. Lithium can replace any of these, okay? Can replace any of these. Magnesium can replace copper and silver. Copper can replace silver, but silver cannot replace anything. Copper cannot replace anything higher. It can only replace silver. Copper cannot replace magnesium or, or lithium. That's how you use that uh, activity series. I don't want to zoom, I just want to just move up. Okay. In a double displacement reaction, in double displacement reaction, you have um, two ions being uh, replaced. So it's double displacement reaction. Um, this reaction takes place in aqueous solution. So we have sodium chloride aqueous mixed with silver nitrate aqueous is going to produce um, products. If reaction takes place, products are produced. Now, how do we predict what the product is going to be? We are going to switch partners, switch cations. This is a double displacement reaction. The cation from the first compound is going to go with the anion from the second compound. And cation from the second compound is going to go with the anion from the first compound. 
So you're going to combine the two and you are going to write proper formula based on the charge of them. So sodium is like a plus one. It goes with the nitrate is minus one. The proper formula is going to be sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Then you have the Ag with Cl. Ag is a plus one. Cl is a minus one. It's going to give you one to one ratio. So you just write AgCl. How would you know AgCl is solid? In order to know AgCl is solid, you don't have to memorize it, but you have to be able to use the solubility table. And from the solubility table, you would decide which if precipitate forms from solubility table, you would decide which compound was the precipitate. So I will talk about the solubility table shortly, but let's look at this also is a question in the pre-lab question on the data sheet how to go from molecular equation to total ionic equation. We did cover some of these in experiment five, uh, but again, you are going to use a lot of this reaction and write the ionic equation for a lot of 12 reactions, 12 experiments in this, in this um, part. So you have the sodium chloride AQ, that's the deal. If anything is AQ, you break it down to ions. So it's going to be sodium ion, chloride ion. Silver nitrate is AQ, so we change to silver ion and nitrate ion. On the product side, we have sodium nitrate, so is is soluble, is AQ. So we change that to sodium ion and nitrate ion. AgCl is uh, insoluble based on the solubility table. This is one of the exceptions. All chlorides are soluble except for mercury, lead, and silver. Um, so silver chloride is not um, soluble. And if it's not soluble, it would appear as precipitate and we designate with this uh, symbol S. When we have the total ionic equation, we are going to cancel the spectator ion. Sodium ion is a spectator. Nitrate is a spectator. So what is left is going to be net ionic equation. Net ionic equation is responsible for evidence of reaction. Um, so in this reaction, the net ionic equation, we have the silver ion, chloride ion generating AgCl, that is a precipitate. So precipitation is the evidence for reaction. Other evidence for reaction is the color change, formation of gas, uh, changing uh, pH, change in temperature. Those are evidences for reaction. Well, for part two of this experiment for double displacement reaction, all of the reactions, they would give precipitate. So we use precipitation for this experiment as the only evidence for the reaction. Uh, but for other experiments, like outside of this, this setup, um, you can use any of those five evidences to determine if the reaction has taken place or not. Sometimes when you try to, to cancel the spectator ions, everything cancels. It is possible though, that is possible. And in that case, you would just say there is no reaction because if there is no net ionic equation, that means there is no reaction. This is the partial um, solubility table. How do you use the, the, the solubility table? It's not a complete table, but I want to make sure that you know how to use it. Um, if the column on the left side, it says group 1A and ammonium compounds are all soluble, so all of them are soluble, and there is no exception. What does it mean? It means that if you have NaCl, it's soluble because Na is, is coming from group 1A. If, uh, if you have KBr, this is soluble. How do I know it's soluble? Because this is coming from group 1A. That's what it means. Or ammonium. So if you have NH4, NH4Cl, is going to be soluble because any compound that contains ammonium ion is soluble. There is no exception. So as soon as you see group 1A, lithium, sodium, potassium, that means that compound is soluble. Or if you see ammonium ion, that means that compound is soluble. 
Then we have a second rule here, another rule, just again, I don't have all the rules because they are in the lab manual and you would look at the lab manual for that. The other rule says that most chloride, bromide, and iodides are soluble with exceptions to silver, mercury one, and then lead. So mercury chloride, lead chloride, silver chloride, not soluble. Lead iodide, mercury iodide, uh, silver iodide is not soluble. Lead bromide, mercury bromide, silver bromide is not soluble. So we know that from the from the these rules. Only if you see chloride or bromide or iodide coming with uh, with one of these combination. Okay, so any of these with any of these. Okay, combination with the uh, PB, HG, and AG, then it's not soluble, okay? Any combination is going to be not soluble. Not soluble. Uh, next rule, it says everything that contains carbonate, it would be insoluble unless is ammonium or group 1A. So if I see that, then I would say barium carbonate is going to be solid, not soluble. I would say calcium carbonate is going to be insoluble because it's not one of those. That's what basically uh, it means. So most carbonates are insoluble unless it's group 1A or is uh, one of those Ammonium. 